Hey, Tactical Painter, welcome back out to the Seuss Crafting Wood Shop. Welcome to the first episode of Shop Talk Tuesday. So, out here in the shop today, we're going to be just giving you an update. Uh, just want to chit chat with you guys a little bit, let you know about some of the stuff we got going on. Today has been a spectacular day. Got up this morning, got some coffee, had some coffee with the wife. My girls woke up, made my daughter some Minnie Mouse pancakes, and she just got all excited up until the point where we poured syrup on and started cutting them up. And she's like, I'm going to eat Minnie? Like, yes. Minnie's delicious. You gotta eat Minnie. So, yeah, it's been a great morning, and I've, I've spent some morning with the family, but now I'm out in the shop. It's Tuesday afternoon. I've got a couple days off from work, and so I'm out here doing some stuff in the shop today, and I just wanted to give you guys an update, some of the stuff we've got going on. I've got a lot of ideas coming up for the new year, uh, a lot of different things that I'm going to be working on, getting going for you guys. Um, Zach over at NV Woodworks, you know, he went on a vacation here recently, and he uh, did a, a huge planning session on stuff that he wants to go on for the year, and and I kind of I did a similar thing. I took a little bit of time off, not so much as a planning session, but just kind of as a recoup session. We were really busy this holiday season. You guys put in a lot of orders. I thank you so much for that. And my wife's birthday is immediately after New Year's. It's like you have New Year's, you have a week, and then it's her birthday. And so I took a week off for her birthday for the first time in the 10 years we've been together. I took a whole week off and we went and we had some fun, recouped some energy, and it, it reinvigorated my creative juices. I just started like all these ideas started rushing through my head and stuff, and it was really spectacular. I love taking the time off, because then driving to work just this last week, I had an epiphany. I had this great idea, and I think you guys are going to love it. Um, so I'm going to be coming out with some new blanks. I'm actually going to start selling blanks in my Etsy store, suitscrafting.etsy.com. That's suits, S-O-O-T-S. And so we're going to be coming up with some blanks that I'm actually going to be selling online for you guys. And they're going to be exciting. They're spectacular. I'm pretty happy with the few that I've gotten out already. There's going to be a whole bunch that we're coming up with. So what these blanks are going to be, it's going to be a themed blanks. So they're going to have a, a general theme to them. Um, a lot of you guys know I'm an Eagle Scout. And... I've spent a lot of times in the woods, out in the back country, and the nice thing when you get out into the woods and out in the back country is that there are no lights. There's no light anywhere, it's dark, and you can see the sky. You can see this beautiful thing above us that when you live in the city, so many of us miss. And when you get out into the backwoods, the back country and stuff, you get to see this gorgeous sky that's laid out in front of you. And, and I've seen a lot of different skies. I've seen desert skies, uh, winter skies. I've seen, I was in uh, one of the, the zones of totality during the total eclipse this last year, two years ago actually now. And we were in the totality for a couple of minutes and it was awesome. And it's, it's done a, a, a lot of things for us. Um, having been through that experience it was one of the first camping trips my my uh three-year-old went on and it was just a ton of fun but i'm gonna come out with some pen blanks that are themed and the the pen blank line i i haven't decided on exactly what i want to call it yet i'm thinking skyscapes so what this is going to be is these are going to be all the things that you can see looking up at the sky and beyond so, like, the Galaxy and Nebula blanks that you guys have been seeing me come out with, those are going to be included in that. Uh, I'm coming out with some Aurora blanks, which I'll show you here in just a moment. So the Aurora Borealis, the green and blue light shows that you get in the northern hemisphere, you know, the northern lights. I'm going to be coming out with some blanks that look like that, and I'll show you a photo of what, like, the inspiration, like, the northern lights is right over here. So, if you haven't seen the northern lights... They're beautiful. You get all these greens and blues, sometimes violets that kind of cut through the night sky and these gorgeous waves, and it's super spectacular to see. And so I'm going to do some Northern Lights blanks. I'm thinking about coming up with like a, a solar and a lunar eclipse blank. I've been mulling that around in my head. How would I do a solar and lunar eclipse? And with the, uh, the solar eclipse, it was really cool because when the sun was completely blocked out, the moon fills it in almost completely. I mean, it, 
all you see left on the outside is just this ring of light that has these little little wisps of light that come off and these little solar flares you can see all these little wonderful things coming out of it and it, when we were in this area of totality um, we saw that for a couple of minutes and so it was really really neat to look at we had the, you know, the, the glasses on and stuff and, and it was a lot of fun it was really cool and so I'm, I'm thinking of doing a solar eclipse blank with like a, a dark black um, circle in the middle and then like a light ring and I, I've got a buddy that's got a 3D printer I'm going to go to him and say hey can I talk you in, into an idea here? Let me let me see what, I, what we can do, and then get like these areas of light that I'm going to get a negative uh, made 3D printed with this ring of light around this uh, this dark cast dowel. Essentially, is what I'm going to have in there: uh, dark black resin dowel, and then that ring of light around the outside, and then the outside of that, the night sky with stars and everything. And uh, I think we're going to do something along those lines, and then like a a, a lunar eclipse as well, or even like a blood moon lunar eclipse, which we just had this last December uh, in the Pacific Northwest, and then also going to do something like a like a winter sunrise. So the bottom section of the blank will be like a wispy pearl, and then that's going to be like like a snow covered field, and then uh, in the winter time, at least here in the Pacific Northwest, I don't know about the rest of the area, um, we get a lot of like pinks and and oranges and reds and things that come up in the sky and whenever there's a cloud it always has like this bright neon pink lining it's really super pretty and so I'm gonna have like this snow covered field and then it'll go up into kind of like a orangish red sky and then I'll have a couple of swaths maybe in there of like some some white pearl with a pink lining or something I, I haven't haven't quite figured it all out yet in my head but that that's the vision that I have and then I also want to do like a coastal sunset. And so I'll have uh, like a segment put in the middle of the blank and I'll have these two halves separated. And I'm going to like variegate um, in, you know, the colors. I'll have like a, like a half circle of the sun. So it'll be like a bright yellow section put in there right at the, the intersection. And then I'll variegate out, you know, reds and oranges and, and yellows and just kind of go off darker actually I guess it'd be backwards it'd be yellow orange then red and then off into like the blues and violets so it's a coastal sunset and on the bottom I'll have the same things but when you're looking at water um, it has lines that cut through it and so on the bottom I put like some pearl powder in and then really mix it back and forth in order to try and get some horizontal lines that's the image that I have I'm gonna test it out I haven't worked on those what I have been working on are these Aurora Borealis blanks so let me show you some of these I've got two different tests with three experiments going on with them these ones here these are from my first test and these are dusty uh, <laughs> so these are they're black with flash white so it's an all black and flash white blank and then inside let me see if I can get you a side profile you can kind of see greens and blues cutting through that same with this one so green and blue cutting across the top and around the backs and sides and all over the blank and so this was done with a dump pour. I did a dump pour on these. I mixed up all the black, put in some flash white for the night sky, the star sky. And then uh, I took that and I took some, um, some colored shifting powders, greens and blues. And then I, I dumped those together first, mixed up the green and blue so they kind of swirl in around each other. And then I dumped all that into the black, did a quick mix and then dump that into my molds and so they turned out really fantastic really happy with those the only thing was is that when you look at photos you know like that photo that I, I showed you guys earlier I'll put it back here um, it's the ribbons like just straight ribbons of color but I didn't want to do like um, you know ribbon castings where you cast out a really thin layer and then you you know mold up ribbons because that's not not quite what it is like they're thick bands really and so I had to do a second casting because um, the pen blanks while they look spectacular um, it's not quite the look that I was going for they're not they're not big bands like these mostly when they when it mixed up like they mixed up 
pretty well, actually. Like, they look pretty thorough. I think they're going to be neat and blanks, but it's not the look. It's not the vision I was going for. So I did a, a second test with two different tests inside of it. So it's three total experiments. There was this first one, and then this second one coming out. I think it's going to be a better effect. And this one, I did a straight pour. So I poured in my black, then I poured in my green-blue mixture, poured in black over top, and then zigzagged the green-blue mixture, poured more black in, zigzagged, and then covered it up with black again, and then put that in the pressure pot. And then on two of the pen blanks, I actually took a bamboo skewer, and I went back and forth through two of them, and then the other two I left plain. So there's one five-eighth and one three-quarter that got stirred, and one five-eighth and one three-quarter that didn't get stirred. And so I'm gonna test both of those against each other, and see how they look. And so the blanks themselves, they look pretty spectacular. Here's the stirred ones. So the stirred ones look pretty fantastic. Here's the 5 8 inch. And you can see some of the lines there where I stirred it up. And then look at the sides there. You see the bands, those ribbons that I was talking about? That's more of what I was going for. And then you can see on the opposite side, kind of the same thing. You can see some of the blues and greens and stuff cutting through there look pretty spectacular. I'm pretty happy with how those look. Um, on the top, when I'm looking at them, the bands are pretty skinny. Um, I'll show you that again. So on the top, the bands are pretty skinny. And same for the, uh, the three-quarter inch. Here's the three-quarter inch. You can see the top. And those bands are pretty thin. But then on the sides, you've got these, uh, these larger bands where they, where they kind of cut through. And so um, I'm liking the stirred effect, but I think when I cut it open, stirring it is going to thin out those bands and they're not going to be as vibrant and stand out and really get you just in awe like the Aurora Borealis does when you ever you see it up in the northern sky. And so here's the not stirred ones. And so these ones don't have the thin lines, so all of the colors stayed in their thick poured state and I think this is what I'm going to be going for I'm, I'm pretty happy with how they look the colors look spectacular and then here's the 5 8 inch and you can see on the top there because I didn't stir in with the bamboo skewer those bands didn't get as thin and so I think that this is the route that I'm going to go so I'm going to do some test blanks probably do some Sierra pens on these and then uh, I'll show you guys the results probably on another uh, Shop Talk Tuesday let's see what else do we got oh customer requests so um, some of you guys here on YouTube have, have sent me in requests I do see those. I actually look at all the comments that you guys send me and I uh, write them down in the same note system that I take when I'm driving to work and I have an idea. I talk to my phone and it writes a note down for me and then when I get to wherever I'm going, I go in and I edit it because you know it doesn't always hear things correctly. And um, so some of the things you guys have asked for uh, that you want to see videos on, um, herringbone pen blanks. You guys want to see how to do a herringbone pen blank and I've seen how other people on YouTube have done them. And so I, I'm going to be doing a spin on that. I, I've, I've got an idea, and I don't want to disclose it too soon. But I've got an idea on a, on a twist on a herringbone pen blank. Because you guys have seen herringbone pen blanks. You look them up, and they're all over the place. But I've got an idea in my head on how I want to do a herringbone pen blank um, that I think is going to be pretty interesting it's not something that I've seen anywhere online and so when it, that video comes out you guys will see it and you're gonna see it's pretty unique so I haven't done one yet uh, but I will be doing a video on a herringbone pen blank um, I, I want to say my customers name or the, the, the guy's name he's a fellow pen turner um, it was cactus irritated cactus so irritated cactus I'm sorry you sent me that request probably like six months ago and I haven't done it yet. I, I'm very sorry. I've been very busy in the shop. But I've got an idea for it. I think it's going to be pretty spectacular. And I think you're going to love it. So, um, so that's one request. Some of the other customer requests that you guys have put in are also for some segmenting blanks. I have done some segmenting blanks in the past. And I can do up some more of those. If you guys want me to do some segmenting blanks, go ahead and vote uh, up here in the corner for those. And uh, I'll be sure to get out some segmenting blanks as well. Um, I also do videos on how I do it. One, that was one of the customer requests 
uh, from a guy, uh, one shootist actually, um, put out recently asking if I'd done segmenting blanks. And I have segmented blanks before. I've segmented them with veneer. And um, at the time, I didn't have like a, a bandsaw or anything. And I actually cut them by hand, um, sanded them on the, on the disc sander, and then put in some veneers and stuff. And so I was able to customize the angles they were sitting at. And it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed doing it. Getting involved in your blank like that by hand is, is really enjoyable, actually. And so it worked out real well. And G2 click pen conversions. This has been the most requested um, item that, that customers have sent me requests on Etsy is to find a click pen that takes a G2 conversion. And I've got some stuff in the mail right now, right this very second, coming to my house that is going to be aiding in doing a G2 click pen conversion. And so I've been doing a lot of testing, checking out a lot of click pen kits, and trying to find a click pen that I can do a G2 conversion for. G2 conversions for my Baron pens and my editor pens have been the most sold item in my Etsy shop. They've been selling fantastically, but everybody's asking me, hey, can you do a click pen conversion? I'd love to have a click pen in the G2 ink refill. And so far, I've had to tell them no. But I'm pretty excited because I've got an idea and I've found a, a pen that I can convert that should work. There's two processes that I've got to do on it. So the processes are minimal as to what exactly I've got to do to the ink pen kit. And then uh, it should accept a G2 conversion. So I'm pretty excited about that. Check it out. Looking for that one to come out here uh, pretty soon. Because as soon as those things get here, I'm going to be out here in the shop testing them out. Because they're... I'm pretty excited for it. And as you guys can see behind me, I had to get a new lathe. So I had my Delta that I've been using for years. You guys have seen that in almost all the videos thus far. Um, over the, the holiday season, I was doing some CA glue finishes. I was doing some CA glue finishes, and the lathe started to kind of act up. I had it running for too long on a slow speed, and it the motor burned up so I uh, had to get a new lathe but because of all your guys' support all of your guys' orders over the holiday season we were able to buy a new lathe and I didn't have to dip into any of my personal funds so thank you guys so much for everything that you did um, ordering this season I was able to afford a new lathe and the one that I've got is pretty spectacular it's variable speed and I love the fact that the switch for it is on the right side because when I'm turning some weird blanks um, it's always nice to actually be able to stand on that side to turn it on and you know if it's going to fly off right out the gate then I'd like to be on the opposite side of the lathe to be honest. Um, so I'm pretty happy, pretty excited. It's a little bit taller as well and so I am able to do some bigger, bigger blanks with it and you can see by the shavings underneath I've already been using it. I've probably made about a dozen pens with it so far already and it's working spectacularly so happy with it and uh, the only thing that I, I have to talk to Rykon about and I've already been in talks with him is the uh, the tailstock that they sent me um, it sits just I mean, a millimeter millimeter and a half below um, the center line so it's just enough that it affects things a little bit while I'm turning it and so I've already talked with them they suggested some things that I could do when I first got it it was actually down into the left I was able to adjust some of that stuff with the headstock I was able to adjust it so now it's central but it's still down I mean just a hair probably actually it's less than a millimeter probably about a half a millimeter it's not much but it's enough that when you're drilling with the lathe it oversizes the hole it causes a lot of vibrations and it's messed with, with a few kits and I've had to kind of hold the drill bit up um, and take some of the play and slop out of it while pushing it in and and so I'm gonna get with Rykon and they already said hey try these things out if they don't work for you we'll just send you a new one because there's probably something wrong with the casting so they've been super great uh, love them over at Rykon great customer service so far and so they're gonna be hooking me up with a, a new tail stock here real soon uh, some of the other things I've been working on, I took a break from doing pen orders in order to do some jewelry boxes here uh, recently. And so the jewelry boxes turned out really good. I'll put some pictures up here. I'll be doing some videos on those. I had to do a test jewelry box before I actually did the, uh, the official jewelry box. I wanted to see, I had this idea for turning a jewelry box 
off center. And so I turned it round first, then I turned it off center, and then flattened that section off on the bit, on the belt sander. And it turned out pretty fantastically. So I hope you guys like that, and look forward to that video coming out real soon. Alright, well that about wraps it up for this Shop Talk Tuesday. I think I'm going to call it at that. I'm sitting, looks like about 20 minutes worth of just me yammering on, so sorry about that. If you like these videos, go ahead and let me know that. Hit this uh, button right up here in the top and vote, you know, yes, no, continue doing these Shop Talk Tuesdays. So I figure I'll just get out of here every Tuesday, give you guys a short, quick, short, quick video on some of the stuff we got going on out in the shop. I'm going to go ahead and close this out, get off of here, and get to fulfilling some more orders. So thank you guys so much for joining me out in the Suits Crafting Woodshop. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Throw that subscribe button right there in the middle as always. Check out some of the videos on the sides. This is Tactical Painter out in the Suits Crafting Woodshop, signing out.